So good to see you on the first in the house. What if every Wednesday and Sunday was just like this, right? You just came to church every single Wednesday. I'm like, Lord, this is my offering this, this night. Amen? Amen. So don't let, a, don't let a full house deter you or parking or checking in your kids. Listen, we come for Jesus. Amen? We ain't coming for no show. Um. I want to just kind of set up the service tonight as we pray for our goals and our vision. And if you didn't write any, that's why we gave you paper and pen. Or you can use your technology and, uh, you know, write some things down. But we're praying. We're praying. We're going to be intentional in 2020. And uh, I want you to know that setting goals is the first step to turning the invisible into the visible realm. Like, that's, that's the starting point. If you think that you're going to keep it up here, help you, Jesus. You're not. Don't, don't be the person that says, oh, I already know I want to do this, this, and that in my head. No. you got to define. Remember, we talked about on Sunday, this is, this is the year where you're going to redefine your priorities. But you can't redefine your priorities if you're not taking inventory of your personal life. It's no such thing. You're, you're bound to repeat the same thing if you don't do something different this year. If you want new results, different results, then you got to do something new. And maybe you're not the kind of person that writes goals. Well, guess what? You can become one tonight for free 99. It ain't going to cost you a penny. You can do it. But it's going to take, listen, it's going to take writing the goals in order for God to turn the visible into the invisible or the invisible into the visible realm. But it only happens in faith. Let me give you a brief description or definition of faith. Faith is this. Faith is to be fully confident of what is not seen as though it is happening. Like tonight, those people that walked up here, okay, they came up here, they got prayer. Okay, maybe their circumstance hasn't changed, but here's the deal. They're confident that when they bend back to that chair, man, they are filled with joy. Amen? Like, I am confident. And so, in other words, I'm telling you that if you can see nothing, then you can expect nothing. This is the year of see beyond. We have to see beyond anything and everything that we've experienced. And I'm going to set this message up tonight because I believe that God gave me a prophetic word for us. And um, there was a very successful uh, doctor who's written many books, and he said this, and I love this. I've read this before, but he said this. He said, you have brains in your heads. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. You have brains in your heads and feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. Your own, uh, I'm sorry, you're on your own and you know what you know and you're the one who will decide where to go. And the famous author of that or the doctor in the house was Dr. Seuss. Come on, somebody. That's some good wisdom right there, right? I think that's what the Bible keeps telling us. Come on. You know what? Where your focus is, that's the direction you're going. And so you got to focus this year. You got to focus tonight. In every possible way, spiritually, relationally, with God, especially in your intimacy with him. But here's, let's just start off with this, Jeremiah 29, 11. I want you to write it down if you're a note taker. So as you're thinking about your notes, you're putting verses down next to them. But this is a promise as you write these goals and you write the vision. It says, for I know the plans I have for you. How many know that right now, many of us have written plans. I brought my goals with me tonight too. I'm praying over my goals. So I have planned my year. Okay, those are my plans, but aren't you glad that God has a better plan than any plan you and I can write? So he says this, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. There are plans for good and not for disaster. Come on, there's going to be no disaster in 2020. You got to plead the blood of Jesus over your family, over your children, over your health. Come on, over your life, over your home. Say there will be no disaster. No disaster. Every time you walk out of your house, say no disaster. Every time you wake up, you say no disaster. You wake up every day, this is the year of no disaster. No plague, no disaster. Man, no, no, there may be assignments, but they won't prosper. Okay, there's going to be assignments, but they won't prosper. Even if the lion opens his mouth and starts roaring. Remember, God knows how to shut the mouth of the lion. Amen. So you got to know that there will be no disaster. But he says, but I'm here to give you a future with what? And I don't know what your 2019 looked like. I'll say it this way. I don't know what your last decade looked like. Because how many know that's not just a new year? We literally just left a complete decade. Ten years have gone by. So I'm not asking you, I wonder what you've been through in 2019. No, my question is, I wonder what you've been through for the last ten years. 
Because God's focused on the last 10. There's something that is so prophetic about the last 10. Why? Because we're entering another 10. And today's the first day of entering that 10. And I have a lot of good news for every single one of us. It's a decade. And when I started thinking about who in the Bible, who in the Bible experienced so much suffering for a decade? And you know, Brian Chen, I, I was trying to find someone specifically for 10. And, uh, you know, they're hard to find in the Bible. But, uh, but I started thinking, okay, who suffered for a very long time? And I think the one who suffered probably the most from anyone who experienced torment, it was probably Joseph. Because how many know that when Joseph was given a dream, a vision by God, he was 17 years old. Joseph did not enter that dream, that vision, 22 years later. 22 years. And we know the story that Joseph, he's highly favored, right? That's like, that's like the, the theme of his life. He's the, the, the favorite child. The favor of God is on him. And, and I don't know about you, but I, I'm always claiming I got the favor of God, man, everywhere I go. And you got you to gotta start thinking that way and seeing yourself. Man, I got favor at work, and I got favor with buying homes. I got favor with stocks. I got favor with deals. I got favor, amen, favor with contracts, favor for a new, a new job. If you're believing God for a new job, favor, but you got to believe that, right? And so Joseph was a God-fearing, obedient, God-loving man, and he had favor, but just because you have favor doesn't mean that you're going to go, that you're not going to go through some trials. You're not going to go through some challenges. We know that as you look at the life of Joseph, he was sold by his brothers. Well, first he was put in a pit. Then they changed their mind. They're like, let's just sell the boy. They sold him. He's now a slave. He goes from being a slave to now being in Potiphar's house. And while he's in Potiphar's house, Joseph keeps getting favor even though his circumstances suck. I'm praying that in 2020, though we may be facing some circumstances that are going to be difficult, that the favor of God is still going to be on it. It's going to be favorable every single time. And so then he's being accused of raping Potiphar's wife. And he goes from now having the favor of Potiphar to now he's in prison. And he's in there for something that he was falsely accused of, obviously. But look at Genesis chapter 41, verse 14 and 16. It says this. It says, Pharaoh sent for Joseph at once. So what happened was Pharaoh was having all kinds of crazy dreams. And, uh, and no one can interpret the dreams. And I'm going to know that God wants to have the body of Christ know how to interpret dreams. And he wants men and women to see vision. And it says, so he, Pharaoh sent at once for Joseph because no one can help him. And he was quickly brought from the prison. Let me say he was brought from the prison. I don't know where you were brought from, but let me tell you where you're going, okay? So he was brought from the prison. After he shaved and changed his clothes, he what? Shaved and he what? Changed his clothes, amen? Come on. We're going to put on the Lord Jesus in 2020. We're going to get some God apparel. And he went in and stood before Pharaoh, and then Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream last night. And no one here can tell me what it means. I'm praying that the divine wisdom of God hits us so hard that we know what to do. That people will say, I don't know what to do, but I know you know what to do. And he says, but I have heard that when you hear about a dream, that you can interpret it. It is beyond my power to do this, Joseph said. Beyond my power. See, you living for God this year is going to have to be beyond your power. It's not what you can do. You don't have to perform for God. You have to just show up and say, okay, yeah, I know that God uses me, but it's going to be beyond me when I speak to you. And he says, it'll be beyond my power to do this, Joseph replied, but God can tell you what it means and set you at ease. I love this. Now, we know that we're now in 2020, which means that we're entering a new decade. We already understand that. And I think that the most significant, symbolic, deep revelation of, as I was studying, and listen, I read just about a bazillion scholars today, and a good amount agreed to the timeline. When Joseph was in the prison, 
I'm sure he had moments of doubt, like, God, I thought you promised me. You told me I'm your favorite. I'm sure he had doubts. He was faithful. He never complained, but I'm sure that inside of his heart, see, there's one thing to complain with people. Come on, that's one thing, when you're a people complainer. And there's another thing when you complain to God. God doesn't mind complaints, but he wants you to direct them to him, not slander and gossip with other people. Amen? Amen. And so he started, I'm sure, having moments of just like, God, but you said, and I remember I was 17, and, 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 and I was forgotten. And if you remember the story, Joseph helped these two guys interpret their dreams in prison, and one guy, his, lack, his luck ran out, and he actually, he got, he got slaughtered. They got rid of him. And then the other guy uh, was, was someone who also worked for Pharaoh, and he said, your life's going to be redeemed, restored. Don't worry about it. It's all going to be good. Just do me one favor. Don't forget me. Put in a good word for me. What does the guy do? He forgets him. So if you've ever felt rejection, let me tell you something. You're not the only one. There's a lot of people that have felt forgotten in the Bible. But what was interesting about the story as I was reading through all the scholars I was looking for the time frame of how many years he was in the prison. You know how many years he was in there? Ten. Ten years. The men had to endure, persevere, overcome. Stir the gift within him. Remind himself of the dream. Remind himself of the vision God gave him. For ten years, one year, two years nothing's happening nothing's changing there is no shift there is nothing new ha i mean he is literally feeling forgotten and i thought that this is so powerful because when you look at the story of joseph he's in this prison for 10 years now i'm sure none of us have been in prison physically in the last 10 years but you may have been in the prison of something for two of the ten, five of the, five of the ten, seven, I don't know what's been keeping you, what's been holding you, but I really believe that the prophetic word that God has given us is that God is about to take us from the place of feeling that you've been in prison in your soul, and there is a whom the sun sets free is free indeed tonight. Like God is doing that. I'm telling you right now. It's, so, it's, it's prophetic. I'm telling you. And I'm going to tell you why it's prophetic because... When, whenever you see stories in the Bible, for example, Joseph, when they came to get him, when favor was coming to look for him, okay, they, they, they got Joseph up. Come here, CJ. They got Joseph up. Come on up here with me. And they said, okay, man. They looked at him, and they're like, yeesh. So, obviously, he was, <laughs> Joseph, listen, Joseph, man, his, his clothes were torn. His pants were ripped. Man, I'm sure he was dirty. His beard was just long. You're in prison. They don't groom you there. It ain't the USA, amen? It's not, don't think county jail. No, You're, you were in the prison. You were in the prison. Skinny, malnourished, gone through stuff. He's like, yeah, that's me. He's like, he's like man, you're, you're describing me, man. He's like, I'm torn inside. But, but. The first thing they looked at him, they said, oh, yeah, that ain't going to work. They said, um, let's go ahead and let's, let's dress him. And so they began to wash him. They began to shave him. They began to put new apparel on him. They began to change everything about him. Thank you, CJ. But here's what's interesting. It was custom. It was custom in these times. That whenever a peasant went from peasant to palace, like Joseph, he went from peasant to palace, okay? It was custom that when they came into this new season, when they, then when they were about to be promoted, you know what needed to happen? They had to take off their stinkies. They had to take off their shoes. And, and you know why? Because custom says in these times that any time that you are about to step into a new season of favor, of blessing, of reward, of healing, of restoration, stay with me, of deliverance, 
of newness of life. They made sure that your old pair of shoes had to be thrown away, gotten rid of. You know why? Because they didn't want any of the old residue of your past to interrupt anything that they wanted to do with you in the future. They didn't want anything from your past to hold you back. When, when, when God says, I'm doing a new thing, he's literally taking off our shoes in 2019 for the last 10 years. And God's saying, hey, whatever you've been through in the last 10 years, God's saying, I'm literally going to completely shift it, change it. Because here's, here's the definition of 2020. Look at this. Look at the definition of 2020 or the number 20. The number 20 is a symbol of, look, completeness, redemption, a perfect period of waiting, labor, or suffering. I don't know who's been waiting patiently for the last 10 years, but God is about to promote you. God's about to get you to take your shoes off and say, okay, hey, listen, those rusty dusties, all the dust, all the dirt of that past, of those 10 years, all those 10 years of having moments where you felt in prison, when you felt forgotten, when you felt left behind, God's saying that's going to end today. The spirit of favor is coming upon you. Amen? Amen. You got to believe that with all your heart. You can't keep dragging that same old life into another year, please. Stop. Look at you and be like, don't drag yourself back in here, please. No, you can't. Listen, you can't drag 2019, 2018, 17, 16, 15. You can't drag that with you in 2020. That's baggage. That's dust. It has to go. Let me prove it to you now. After they went ahead and changed his whole appearance, his look, and changed definitely his shoes, look what happens. In Genesis 41, a few verses down, it says, Joseph's suggestions were well received by Pharaoh after he interpreted and his officials. So Pharaoh asked his officials, can we find anyone else like this man? So obviously filled the spirit uh, the Spirit of God, then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has revealed the meaning of the dreams to you, clearly no one else is as intelligent or wise as you are. You will be in charge of my court, and all my people will take orders from you. Only I, sitting on my throne, will have a rank higher than yours. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the entire land of Egypt. Listen, that was the word that God gave him 22 years prior. And then 10 years, he's in a prison, forgotten. Just because you may feel that God is silent doesn't mean that God is absent. God is not absent. Sometimes silence is what has, it, God will use that to build character. God will use that to build faith. God will use that to build trust. And as I was reading this, I was thinking, man, you want to talk about promotion? You want to talk about reward? Man, you want to talk about favor? Joseph was the perfect example from 10 years. He celebrated his 2019, and then it was 2020, and the favor was on him. Let me show you now in, um, in Matthew chapter 10, 14, says this. It says, whoever does not welcome you. Look at this. This is Jesus. He's, he's rolling with his disciples in 2019. Entering, entering, or ending 31st, entering the first. On the first, they're trying to go and preach this thing. He says, whoever does not welcome you nor listen to your message, as you leave that house or city, shake the what? Off your what? In contempt, breaking all. See, some of us have some ties that need to be broken now. There's some ties. And listen, you don't have to have a soul tie, but you can be tied to negativity. <laughs> you can be tied to doubt. You can be tied to fear. God's saying, hey, listen. No, no, no. I want you to dust your feet. Boom. Dust the past. Because where we're going, in other words, saying, if you, if you had people reject you, if you had people abandon you, if you had people talk about you, if you had people hurt you, if you had people blame you, said, forget about it. Just dust yourself off. And let's get ready because we're about to go do some more. You got to get your eyes off the past. Get your eyes off the dirt. Amen. Eyes off the dirt. Get them off the dirt. And he says, man, you just, 
you, you leave that, you shake it, and you dust your feet, and, 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 and break, all, break all ties. I, listen, you got, you got to break the ties. Old thought patterns, old habits, addictions, false commitment. No, we have to have true commitment this year. We have to have dedication. We have to have discipline. We have to have focus. We got to be in the house of the Father where you get stirred, where you get, where you get nudged a little bit, where you get pushed, where you feel a little awkward. You feel a little bit uncomfortable in the church because you're like, oh, I don't know, man. This is too much. You need a little bit too much. We need a little bit more of Jesus in our life. Amen. Look at Hebrews 12, 3. Okay. He says, 12 verse 1 through 3 says, a huge cloud of witnesses all around us. Look at this. This is why we have to do this. He says, so let us throw off everything. Let us get rid of everything that stands in our way. Come on, what do you need to get rid of right now? What's, what's keeping you from, from wholeness? So often, and, and listen, I, I'm not, I don't preach against people. I don't like doing that. I believe that you can, you can forgive people, but you don't have, that don't mean you have to do life with them. That doesn't mean you have to be hooked up with them. That doesn't mean you have to do anything with them. You, you love no matter what. But I believe that there are some people that you got to cut out of your life. You have to do it. Listen, if you don't cut them, they're going to bring you down. They're going to they're gonna distract you. They're going to draw you away. They're going to, listen, if you want to be on fire, you got to get around fire. You want the fire of God? You got to get around the fire. Come on, you don't just hang out. Listen, it's like taking hot coals. You take, you take, you take carne asada hot coals. You know what I'm saying? And, and you, you take one little coal out from the pile of the fire, that one coal will eventually lose its flame. The rest of the pile, they're lit. So what do you got to do? You got to get yourself out from among them and put yourself back in the pile of coal and fire, and you'll see how you'll stay on fire all of 2020. So he says this. He says, let us throw up any sin that holds us uh, so so what? Tightly. The sin that holds us so what? There's some things that are holding you and me tightly. And we have to, we have to be like, nah, I'm ready to let that go. And let us keep on what? Running the race marked out for us. Well, you need feet and you need shoes to run that race. Let us keep looking to Jesus. He is the one who started this journey of faith. And he is the one who completes the journey of faith. He paid no attention to the shame of the cross. He suffered there because of the joy he was looking forward to. Then he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He made it through, uh, he made it through these attacks by sinners. So think about him. Think about Jesus. Then you won't get tired and you won't lose hope. Listen, it's time to put on your new shoes of promotion. It's time. It's time to take off the old and it's time to put on the new. Come on, we have to start saying in 2020, I win because he won. I win because he won. Say that with me. I win because he won. Jesus said, for it was the joy that was set before me. You have to see the joy of that dream, that vision, those goals. Worship team, you can come back up now. And you got to prepare. So this is now what we have to do. Quickly, I'm almost done. That's it. Two verses done. Matthew 7, 24. I want to leave you with some verses here. Write them down. It says, so then everyone who hears my words and puts them into what? What do you got to do now? Practice. You got to practice, man. You can't just come in here, listen, and be like, okay, that was so good. No. No, you got to practice this. Practice. That's the only way to become proficient. He says, let them put this into practice. Like a wise man, he builds his house on the what? The rain comes down, the water rises, the winds blow and beat against that house, but it does not fall. It is built on the? But everyone who hears my words and does not put them into is like a what? A fool. You're a foolish man. You're a foolish person. He built his house on sand. Everybody say the rock. Come on, our job is to put these goals our God is to put this vision, our, God, our job is to put this word to practice. But every single one of us this coming year, we have to build on the rock of Jesus Christ. There is no other way. There is no other way. We got to hold firmly. 
maybe, maybe you're someone that hasn't fasted. <coughs> Every year, we do 21 days of fasting. How many have done that with us? Okay. How many started that and then you just, you fell off the wagon? Listen, this is the year where you say to yourself, you know what? This year, I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. I'm going to be in it to win it, man. Things are going to be different this year because my flesh doesn't want to fast. Come on. You know who's in charge when you take food away. You know who's been boss of your life. Right? So we got to dethrone King Stomach. And we need to go ahead and put King Jesus back on the throne. Amen? But you got to fast and pray. Maybe, you, maybe you're not a faster. You're like, I don't know. It's too much. No. Get over yourself. No. I'm, I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. Regardless if you've fallen off the wagon in the past years, but it's a new decade. It's a whole new decade. Something, listen, something's going to shift. I, I believe we're going to see the greatest prosperity come out of this church. I'm, I'm not kidding you. I see it. The greatest prosperity in every possible way. I see it happening. If you've never been consistent with being a part of God's family, man, get plugged in. Stop being a church, you know, a tender and, and, and be a, a contributor of what God's doing in the house. Amen. Maybe you've been coming to Elevate Church for a little bit. You come on holidays or you come here and there or you hear about Elevate Night. You're like, I'll go check out Elevate Night. No, stop that. Get rooted. Get planted. This coming, this coming Sunday is Welcome Home. My wife and I will be there. We're going to be talking about the vision of, of Elevate Church. If, you, if you're not a partner here, get connected this year. Maybe you've just kind of been dating the church. Stop dating. Get married. There's a girl looking at her man and, mm hmm. <laughs> Listen, it shouldn't take years to get married, man. I'm telling you that right now. I'm just saying. Oh, can't put a ring on that thing. And it's been like two, three years, like, mm. Maybe time for change. I'm just saying. You're, listen. Listen. You're either, go, you're either going somewhere or you're going nowhere. And you look at that man or that girl and you say, okay, there's that word nowhere. Let's, let's go ahead and break that word up now here. Come on, we're right here, right now. Let's get married. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just, saying, I'm just throwing it out there. I don't know. I'm helping you girls. Ladies, it's just Let's get back. <laughs> As we pre prepare to pray for our, our goals and our vision, I want you to know that no one understands lack of vision like Moses. I've studied everyone in the Bible, but no one lacks understanding God's vision like Moses. Moses for 40 years is just wandering around. And he's just been in the place of desert for 40 years and he feels purposeless. He feels useless. He feels like, man, there's, there's nothing more for me. So if you feel like, man, no one understands me. Oh no, read your Bible. There's a lot of people that understand. And he's on the desert on this one day and he's probably, you know, just bored of his job, hates his job. Maybe you hate your job. God wants, to, God wants to revive you. And he hates his job. He's helping his father-in-law tend his sheep. Wasn't even his sheep. He was driving his father-in-law's sheep. Tending them, taking care of them. Probably, man, life sucked. Walking around the same, same cycle every day. The same thing. Feed the sheep. Talk to the sheep. There's no one else to talk to. <laughs> you know. Just imagine how boring but then, but then 2020 came for Moses. Exodus 3, verse 2 and 6 says this. It says, there the angel of the Lord appeared to him from his, inside a burning bush. And Moses saw that the bush was on fire. But it didn't burn up. So Moses thought, I'll go over there and I'll, I'll, I'll do what? See. I'll go over there and what? See. This strange sight. Why doesn't this bush burn up, man? Like, man, I see it. It's lit, but nothing's getting burned. Wow. Aren't you glad that God could put the fire on you and not burn you? 
And the Lord saw that Moses had gone over to look. So God spoke to him from inside the bush and he called out Moses, Moses. And tonight God is calling out your name. And then Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Don't come any closer. Because there's going to be, there's going to be a, a new way of entering God's presence. Okay, listen. He says, don't, 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 don't come any closer right now. Take off your... Take off your what? Take off your shoes. My, how many years was he in the desert? How many years was he in dry land? How many years did he have no vision? 40 years. And the first thing God tells him, take off your shoes. How many believe that God was about to do a shift in that man's life? Look at this. He said, take off your chanclas. Because the place that you're now standing on is what? Holy. It's holy ground. He continued, I am the God of your father. I'm the God of Abraham, I'm the God of Isaac, and I'm the God of Jacob. When Moses heard that, he turned his face away. He was afraid to look at God. I want us to just think for a moment that this night, as you and I bring our goals to God, our vision to God, as we bring our life to God tonight. Now, you don't have to do this. It's up to you. I did it because I want this to be something prophetic for me. I want this to be something that connects with my heart that I'll never forget. I want to leave the dust of the last 10 years behind. I want to know that tonight I'm in a place that is holy ground. And I want to worship the King of Kings and tell him, God, you can have my past. You can have my dirt. You can have my sins. You can have my mess. You can have my disappointments. You can have my hurts. You can have my pain. I'm leaving them all behind because I'm ready to have my burning bush moment with you. I'm ready to get in your presence. I'm ready to hear from heaven. I'm ready to do Christianity differently. I'm ready to follow you completely wholeheartedly. I'm ready to stop complaining. I'm ready to stop questioning. And I'm ready to start following everything that you want me to do. Amen? And so here's what I want you to do. You can do it or not. It's up to you. Stand to your feet. Let's get out of here. I want you to take off your shoe as a symbolic moment. And put him under the chair. Don't put it, don't leave him there where everybody smells. <laughs> don't worry, we'll have some ushers walk around with some aerosol in a minute. <clears throat> Can I get my tea, please? <clears throat> Listen, let me tell you what happens when you take off your shoes like you're doing right now. You're doing what Moses said to God. It says that when Moses heard the voice of God, when God said to him, take off your sandals because the place you stand on is holy, that was the place where Moses learned reverence for God. He said that he was so afraid that he looked away. It wasn't the, it wasn't the fear that you and I think of fear. It was the healthy fear that says, God, I, I don't feel worthy, but, but I'll take my shoes off. That's the first place of humility is you take those shoes off and you plant your feet on the ground and you say, Lord, this, this is a holy moment for me. And it was in that burning bush that God began to give them, uh, give Moses instruction, clarity, vision, purpose. It was the place that he brought him out from nowhere to now going somewhere with God. And I want to pray for our goals because we're standing on holy ground. And I want you to grab your goals if they're on your phone, if they're on your paper. We're going to bring these before the Father tonight. Here's mine. Don't start the year without goals. Don't do that. You'll have a repeat. You'll have a repeat. If you don't know how to write goals, go back to our previous messages. I, I've taught on even how to write goals. So go back and listen to something or Google writing goals. But uh, you, don't, you don't want another, another repeat. And I want you to lift them up to the Father. And I want you to say, Father, I stand here today 
with no shoes. I'm taking them off tonight because I believe that I'm leaving my past behind. My failures, my sins, my disappointments, my anger, my unforgiveness. I'm leaving it all behind. I want none of it. I don't want any of the hurt. I don't want any of the pain. I'm letting go and I'm moving out of the prison. I'm ready to step in to divine favor, divine healing, divine power, divine wisdom. Lord, tonight, I'm not here playing church. I am the church. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and I'm not beneath. I'm blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. Heavenly Father, you own a cattle on a thousand hills, and they all belong to you. I know where to find my wealth. I find it in Jesus. I know where to find my wisdom. I find it in Jesus. I know where to find my favor. I'll find it in Jesus. He is the rock of my life. He is the king of my heart. This will be the year where I will surrender my ideas, my opinion, my thoughts, negative, anything that is limiting me, I'm letting it go. I believe that your Holy Spirit lives in me. Holy Spirit, tonight I'll be self-aware that greater is He that lives in me than he that's in the world. This is my year. This is my year of victory, favor, love, kindness, faith. This is the year where I will follow Jesus no matter what. No matter what trial, no matter what trouble, Jesus is my rock. He's my shelter. He is my hope. He is my peace. He is my promoter. He is my provider. He delivers me. He is the way. He's the truth. And He's the life. And my life is found in Christ. In Jesus' name. If you believe that, say, Amen. Yeah!